Hey everybody, welcome back. This week I'm going to show you guys an easy way to get your feet wet with solar power generation. It's cheap, it's not going to kill you as easily as a full size system and it'll give you an opportunity to have a play if you're a little bit hesitant or reluctant uh, to get involved. There's a lot of videos out there with solar power system installs, etc, etc. And it's no wonder a lot of people are daunted by trying to get into solar. I mean, there's cables and boxes upon boxes and more cables, etc. Um, a lot of people might be reluctant to spend the money to get involved with it. So I'll show you what I did to get my feet wet with solar power generation. The first thing you're going to want to do is get one of these. What are these, you might ask? Well, these are different models of UPSs. Um, UPS, un uninterruptible power supply. Uh, you've probably seen them used, or you might even have one yourself at home that you've used to keep your computer going in the event of a power failure to save your files, etc., etc. If you don't have one, Go on to your local marketplace, eBay, wherever you get good second-hand goods and you want to try and find a UPS that's working but the battery's shot. We don't want to use the batteries. The batteries in these are pretty small. They give you enough time for a computer to run for 15-20 minutes to shut down safely. Now the three models that I've got here, um, the bottom one's a 450 watt, I think that's a 650 watt and this one is a 1000 watt. I haven't butchered this one yet. I haven't had a need to. What I've found with the UPS is generally when you get to about a thousand watt UPS, the battery voltage that they rely on is 24 volts, not 12 volts. So smaller ones generally just run on a 12 volt cell. So if you're going to use a thousand watt UPS, you're going to need two batteries, not just one. So that's the back of the one kilowatt unit. Those two wires, the red and the black, uh, inside the box were two 12 volt sealed um, lead acid batteries, I think that lead acid or gel batteries, uh, wired up in series to give it 24 volts. I drilled two holes in the back, uh, put two grommets in, you don't want to have any of the wires chafing to earth, that could cause you a problem, and just extended the wires out the back of the unit after removing the batteries. Exact same thing on the 650 watt unit which runs on 12 volts. It only had a single 12 volt cell. So the next thing you'll need is a battery and two decent terminals. An old car battery that doesn't work too well in the car, doesn't charge or it doesn't start the car very nicely in winter. One of those will do for now. If you've got a 24 volt UPS, you're going to need two batteries and four, four clamps. So essentially the first step is all that we are doing is we're replacing the batteries that come built into the UPS with a bigger battery outside the UPS cabinet. Next thing we're going to need is a solar charge controller. Now you can pick these up on Amazon pretty cheap, also eBay, uh, second hand marketplace I wouldn't bother, they're about 20 quid I think, 20 bucks. Um, depending on what model you buy, they'll auto sense uh, from 12 volts, 24 volts, up to 48 volts. Uh, some of the others will only do 12 or 24 volts. So you want to double check the voltage of the battery your UPS uses and then confirm that you're ordering the right charge controller. The other thing you're going to want to pick up, probably from Amazon as well, is a couple of MC4 connectors. And depending on how many solar panels you want to put in, uh, in parallel, uh, either two or three-way splitter. The other things you're going to want to order from Amazon when you order your charge controller and MC4 connectors is an MC4 crimping tool. You can't do the job without it. Just end of story. Don't waste your time. If you really want to splash out, you can get one of these MC4 sort of detachment clips and tightening clips, but not really necessary. You can do it with your fingers. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put decent connectors on the ends of the cables. The cables that I'm using are just normal solar panel cables. I've been using them for a long time on the one kilowatt for the battery feed and it seems fine. There's no issues. They don't get hot. So that's what I'm using here. 
Unfortunately, I've only got black, so I'm using black with a piece of red tape on each end so I know which is positive. Primary rule that you need to remember when playing around with this is red and black never meet. Never. Unless you're putting batteries in series. We'll get to that later on the 24 volt um, inverter. I found four that are going to do the trick perfectly. First thing you want to do is confirm which of the connectors goes on positive and which goes on negative. You can't mix them up because one's smaller than the other. The smaller one is the negative. Okay, so we're going to work with a positive one first, so we'll take the positive connect off and keep it close to hand. Now I've got this handy cable stripper, but you don't really need that. If you've got a standing knife, you can do it quite easily with a standing knife. Just don't cut your fingers. This is not a how-to video, this is a how I did it video. So do what I do at your own risk. There we go. and give it a good crimp. And I'll do the same with the negative, but I won't bore you with that. Alrighty, so I've got the negative lug and the positive lug crimped. I'm just double checking, yep, that's negative. So we'll connect the negative onto the negative of the battery. Up. and we'll do the same on the positive now some people might say aren't you going to put a fuse in there uh, short answer no the UPS is already fused for the correct amperage for the maximum draw allowable to deliver the 650 watts so if there's an issue irrespective of the size of the battery the fuse in the ups is going to blow if there's an issue at this point you can hold your finger on the ups and sometimes it'll turn on sometimes it won't so it took messing around with it a few times to get it to fire up but that should be giving us 240 volts out the back. Now one other thing you're going to need is you're going to need one of these types of plugs to be able to plug into the back of the UPS to get voltage out to an outlet that suits your region. Yep, so we've got power there. What can I plug in at all? Ah, 650 watts. But anyway, that's the basic premise of what you do. So the battery voltage is currently sitting at 12.27 volts and is going to slowly but surely drop down. Even though we're not drawing anything, the UPS is going to use some power in this uh, mode. Now at this point you might be thinking, well, there we go. What do we need solar for? We just put bigger batteries on the, battery, on the UPS and if the power goes out for a couple of days, we're fine. The problem with that is the charger built into the UPS is not designed to charge a larger battery than what was specified in the design. That's why we need to put solar on it so that the solar charge controller can get the batteries back up to a full charge. So now it's time to get the charge controller hooked up. If I can find it. There we go. Excuse the mess in the shed. Although if you've watched any of my videos, you're probably used to it by now. <laughs> right, charge controller. So this charge controller will do 30 amps at 12 or 24 volts. Now I've already connected wires into the charge controller for the purposes of making this brief, well as brief as possible. Once again using black but using red tape on the end to, to denote which is positive. Remember the rule? Black and red never touch, unless you're putting batteries in series. 
So I'll just quickly put the terminals on the end and then we can move on to the next part which is going to be connecting up the solar panels. Now at this point, when you connect the battery to the charge controller, it's going to come alive. So don't be alarmed. And there you go. And there you have it. Charge controllers come to life. It's showing the voltage of the battery is sitting at 12.3 volts. Now, I have already pre-crimped the ends of the MC4 connectors. Once they're crimped in, you can't pull them out. And that's it, they don't come out. But it's got a little waterproof ferrule at the back. Make sure you keep that in. You don't want water getting into the MC4 connectors because these will be exposed to the elements. And that's it. I mean, you can, if you really want to get clever, you can use the tool to tighten it. But to be fair, you can hand tighten it just as well. There we go. So we're now at the stage where we're ready to go outside and test it. Hopefully, we've got a bit of sun. I'll drag a panel off the roof and we can do a quick test. Right, so we've identified the voltage required for the UPS. We've also got a charge controller, solar charge controller. The next thing we need to talk about is matching your charge controller to solar panels. Now it's kind of like a chicken and an egg and an omelette story. If you've got a UPS, you're bound by the voltage it requires. If you've got solar panels already, Oh, this is going to be... Basically, you've got to make sure that the solar panel input matches the required input for the charge controller, that the charge controller output matches the required input for the UPS, battery charge. That's about it. <laughs> the easiest way to explain it. Now, the charge controller I'm using, uh, the specs on it are that it cannot take more than a thousand watts input of power and it cannot go more than 60 volts input power. Now, most panels, in fact, all panels will have a label on the back, which will give you required information. Open circuit voltage, max power voltage, short circuit current, and max power current. As you can see, these panels are 200 watts. Their open circuit voltage is 45 volts, which is important, and they deliver five amps each. Now, I've got two panels. I can't put these panels in series because then in series you add the voltages of the panels together which would give me a string voltage of 90 volts which is f high, higher than what the charge controller will manage. So in order to connect two of these panels together I'm going to have to put them in parallel which just keeps the voltage the same but will then double the amperage. Okay so this is a setup we've got the UPS connected to the battery connected to the charge controller. Happy to see that the charge controller is still reporting a voltage of 12.3 volts, which is what it was last night. So the inverter off, it hasn't draw, uh, drained anything out of the battery. As you can see at the moment, there's no input coming in from the panels. So we'll connect those up now. Well, we'll connect one up now. Now, I don't like connecting panels generally in direct sunlight. It's just the thing I've got. So there's still going to be some generation coming through from reflected light, but it's not going to be as bad as if they are facing the sunlight directly. So I'll connect them like this. So 
that's one panel connected. We'll turn it round and then go and see what we're generating. And yes, I can do with a clean. <laughs> So the PV is pushing in 2.4, 2.5 amps into the battery bank. Okay. Yep, we've got power coming out of there. I found something I can run. That's not going to cause the inverter to have a freak out. It's a little drill sharpening station. There we go. There we go. So that's running. <coughs> The solar panels are charging. So there you have it. In the simplest of terms, you have your own DIY solar power generation system. You've got the first component, which is an inverter, which is what a UPS is. You've got your storage component, the battery. You have your charge controller. And outside you have the solar panels. The minute I put a load on it, the charge controller increases the charge. So that means that the battery is nearly fully charged. So it's monitoring the battery state and ensuring it doesn't overcharge. So in a nutshell, that's how simple it is. In a bigger, more advanced system, obviously you're going to have circuit breakers, etc. in places where you need them. I could have done with a circuit breaker from the batteries etc but this is just for the purposes of demonstrating how simple it is if you guys want me to go into more detail in sort of a layman's understanding uh, of how these things hang together drop some comments below and i can put something together let me know what you want me to talk about um, there's so much uh, for expert advice <laughs> don't come to me i'm not an expert i just figure out ways to do things there are expert channels out there. Will Browse, he's got his stuff together. Go and watch him if you need any more detailed uh, information on how to calculate wire sizes, etc., etc. And there you have it. Simple as that. I mean, what have you got to lose? Worst case scenario, you've got a independent source of power. Uh, should the grid ever go down for any length of time, it'll save your bacon. <laughs> It has saved ours in the past, to be honest with you. Uh, when we lived up in the north of Scotland, we actually had a power outage for about three, four days. Uh, it was a godsend having the inverter with solar power so that I could run the internet router and the Wi-Fi access point in the house and the kids could charge their iPads. If it wasn't for that, they would have driven us around the bend. If you separate the charge controller and solar panel from the in the UPS you could actually use that for charging car batteries assuming you're using a 12 volt system <laughs>